On our recent missionary trip to East Africa, first Nairobi, Kenya, then Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Driving through the downtown streets of Addis Ababa, I pulled out my camera and began recording. As you can see, it was like driving through any other city on this planet. A city of five million people, commercially strong, stable, vital. Nairobi, a city of well over four million people. Clearly, you can see there's not much difference between these two cities and the cities of London, Tokyo, Shanghai, Buenos Aires, Toronto, Kingston, Manila, Las Vegas, Boston, Moscow, etc., and on and on. A city is a city is a city is a city. These are the result of humanity's first homicidal maniac, Cain, who built the first city on earth. God's plan for the human race was rural living. Thus, he placed his first school home students in a garden that he himself planted. Regarding the current global crisis, the turmoil in these cities worldwide will soon reach a level of biblical proportions. But, brother, sister, God has a solution in place. But as the days of Noah were, says the Bible, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, Matthew 24, 37. God told Noah in no uncertain terms, because of the prevailing iniquity at that time, I need you to build an ark, an ark of safety, an ark of refuge. If the same sins that existed in Noah's time exist in our world today, surely the solution must be the same today as it was then. God is not asking you and I to build a boat, luxury liner, or canoe, but he's asking us, brother, sister, to build another type of ark. He's asking us to build a country outpost center. Back, brothers and sisters, to another Ark to Build, the Country Outpost Center, God's Family School. I'm Brother Elvin Bridges, of course, the Living Man of Ministries, and I have with me Spencer Scott, Brother Spencer Scott yeah. from Seven Stars, Seven Stars Fresh Foods, and, and Unstoppable Gardening. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Well, we're here in module number four now. Tonight, we're going to enter into the, stu the subject, the topic of agriculture. And we know, brother, that agriculture is a very important issue with the Lord. Yes. <coughs> we know yeah. that in the beginning, when he created Adam and Eve, the Bible says that he didn't develop a garden or manufacture one. The Bible actually says he planted a garden. That's right. And then he placed our brother Adam in there to keep it and to dress it, to maintain it, and to till the ground. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important component with God's work. We also know that we're told that Every institution, all of our schools, and also all of our sanitariums need to have a garden area or some form of agriculture attached to it. Absolutely. That's God's plan. Absolutely. So Absolutely. what we're going to do today is look at two sets of different types of tools. We're talking about tools today. Okay. We're going to look at a few selected hands-on tools, and then we're going to take time and look at what I like to refer to as passive tools. Okay. Tools that aren't necessarily hands-on, but that play a very important role in maintaining what God needs you to have at your place. Good. A garden. Good. Or a farm, yep. Yep. as is the case here. We'll get to that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. So we're going to start off with one very, very important practical tool. It is. A hands-on tool. It is. When my wife and I moved out here six years ago, we found out very quickly that we needed one of these. Mm -hmm. This land gets very, uh, the growth gets very thick and full and the foliage grows very high. And we were spending a lot of money on paying people to get this job done here. Mm -hmm. So it got to a point maybe three years ago or so, we were at the very, very end of the season. We know we needed, we knew we needed to have it cut. Everybody was very busy at that time. Mm -hmm. It was like going toward November or so. 
And so we looked everywhere. We ended up finding a guy in Alabama who came all the way up here and charged us an exorbitant amount of money. So at that point, we said, we have to pray and beg God to open the door for us to get one of these. So yes. we prayed by faith and we he answered by faith amen mm -hmm. so this is a Kubota it's a very very well-known brand Kubota tractor we're going to walk around and look at some key points on this tractor okay it is 42 horsepower which is more than enough for this type of land it's good we're not doing anything really major in terms of major major cutting mm -hmm. it's just we like to try to keep the land pristine and looking nice and presentable because we're representing God in everything we do. So we want to maintain it as best we can. So this definitely does the trick. Um, we've had it about three years and it's, it served us very, very well. Very well. Good. Good. Now, we're, we're directing this talk today more toward the brothers that are still living in the city. Not mm -hmm. so much those that are in the country, although those that are in the country, of course, can learn as well. But we're targeting this segment more toward those who don't have tools and are trying to learn what they need to get in order to maintain their property and maintain God's land. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what we typically do is there are certain areas of our property that need the tractor more than others. More around the house area and around the area around the greenhouse as we use our mower. And we're gonna talk about the mower actually in a few minutes. But there are areas here that are a lot more thick. Uh, we have berry bushes here and berry vines and different things on this part, this section here. And my brother can turn down that way. You can see that going all the way down to the tree line, the berry vines are actually starting to grow up but just a little, little bit. We're still kind of in the winter. We still have maybe another month to go before we get into the spring, the spring months. Mm -hmm. But you need that extra power, that extra cutting power to be able to deal and contend with these vines. And that's what this tractor does for us. Yes. <clears throat> you can see the greening in the grass already. It's yes. starting to come. It really is. Mm -hmm. And just hard to imagine only a week ago or so, this was blanketed with white snow, probably six to eight inches high. So what I want to discuss first is the reason we got it. This is referred to generally a cutter, but it's actually what we call a bush hog. Now, from what I understand, and Brother Spencer, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. the bush hog is actually a brand name. It's not so much the name of the product. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like Xerox for, for yes. copiers. Or, or, or Kleenex for tissue. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. Yep. So, but a critical tool. Very critical. critical. Tool. Yes. Yeah, critical tool. So, I'm going to ask my cameraman, I'm going to start it. I'm going to ask you, brother, to get a shot underneath. I want to show the brothers what it looks like underneath. Actually, you can come around here, brother, and follow me. I'm going to... I know a lot of people are watching this and seeing this for the first time. Now, I want to I want to preface everything by saying when we first got this, I was extremely intimidated by it, very intimidated. But now, after a lot of experience with it and using it over a couple of years, it's almost like a toy. Now, of course, we don't use it as a toy, but I'm just using that as an as a a description that for you to understand. It's really as easy as using a mower now. Yeah. So this is the ignition here and the key as you can see is in the ignition the number one thing that we have to always keep in mind is safety, is safety. yes safety safety i can't repeat it enough safety 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 yes and we'll get into some of the safety aspects in a second so i'm going to start it up and i'm going to raise the hog up you come over here this lever here lowers and raises the cutter on the bush hog. So I'm going to raise it up. And we can get a little bit under here, brother, so they can see the blade. It's not as high as I would want it, but there's a huge cutting blade under there. They can see that. That's what does the work. Those, those mm -hmm. blades. I'm going to turn it off. Now, Brother Spencer, mm -hmm. you have a lot more experience with this than I do. Okay. I know you've used some of those mega, mega, mega tractors. This mm -hmm. is what I would call kind of a, I don't want to call it a consumer tractor, but mm -hmm. uh, for our needs and necessities, it's very, very important. Yes. How would you classify this as far as, because they're also, they have the same type, but they have a lower uh, number of horsepowers. Mm -hmm. They had some that were 39. They had some that were, I think, 32. We, it was important for us to get a cutter that was wide enough to cover a decent area. What I mean by that is, and you can chime in whatever you want, mm -hmm. 
I think they uh, they had, if I remember correctly, they had a five footer, they had a, maybe a four foot wide. Yeah. This is six feet. And we felt like it was important to get at least six feet because mm -hmm. the wider it is, the bigger area you're able, able to cut right. the pass as you go back and forth right. cutting. Right. And so it cuts down on the time you have to utilize to be able to get it done. Mm -hmm. If we had gotten half as wide a, a, a cutter size, it would have taken twice as much time to get it done. Right. They also have 12 foot, they do, they 12 do. foot wide, which I was interested in, but mm -hmm. I couldn't get mm -hmm. that because the number of horses wasn't enough. And the size of the tractor wouldn't be able to hold that. Mm -hmm. You want to scale a tractor or a tool that you use to the to your usage. Yes. Yeah, and, and certainly with acreage like this, you want to be able to, as you said, cover <laughs> mm -hmm. and mow in, in, a, in a succinct fashion. You want to be able to do it quickly, to, yeah. do, it, to do it reasonably. Mm -hmm. If it's too small, it takes too long, and it works the tractor too hard. Yes. And that's what the horsepower, that, the horsepower reading. This, is, this would represent a midline tractor for you know for for use like this yes. which is which is a, which is a good it's a good unit all right and again like you mentioned before safety 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 mm -hmm. um, when you're cutting and you're on side hills it's it's critical that yes. you that you understand where equilibrium is yes yes when these tip over it's too much weight for anybody to take off of you mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's that's a very very critical point amen when you come to the uh, bush hog if the cameraman would come around to this side Anytime you're working with a tractor and you're adjusting, always when it's off, if ever you have to do anything when it's running or the PTO is engaged, yeah. you want to make sure you don't have any loose clothing on. If anything gets wrapped around that PTO when it's in motion, there's no stopping Lights it. out. Yeah. There's no stopping Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So safety, safety, safety is, is, yeah. is serious. I want to get into that for a second, brother. Mm -hmm. Now, as I mentioned earlier, initially when we first, when first, the Lord first opened the door for us to get this, uh, I was very uh, apprehensive about going on hills and cutting hills. Mm -hmm. We have uh, several slopes down, especially down around the house area. What I learned initially was by trial and error. I took time to go down some of the hills. I was very reluctant because I'd heard some horror stories of people getting, you know, turning over, sliding over. Absolutely. Now these tires are filled with a fluid. Mm -hmm. And what they do is maintain, like you say, you use the word equilibrium. They mm -hmm. maintain the balance mm -hmm. to keep it from doing that. But at some point, uh, at some point in time, if you're on too hard of a grade, yeah. at some point it has to give. You, it will. It'll definitely do that. One thing that people, one thing that you've got to know that these tractors don't have suspension, yes. so they're rigid. So mm -hmm. there's no give and take when you're on a hillside to absorb or to balance. Right, no that. compensation. Of none, no compensation kind. whatsoever. Yeah. Very good word, none, none at all. So, so when they get past a, a particular point, they're going to come over. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to know where that point is. Yes, sir. So I was very, very hesitant. I would go a little bit on the, on the grade. I'd come back up, go a little bit down, a little further the next day or two, come mm -hmm. back up. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that I was starting to slip a little bit. It took me a few months of doing that to realize that you don't get the full uh, impact of the usage of this tool unless the ground is 100% dry, dry mm -hmm. especially on the slopes and on the hills. It yeah. has to be 100%, I mean, like when the grass is crisp, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you can go ahead and take the chance and go on the hills. And at that point, I realized I could go almost anywhere with it. Mm -hmm. these, mm -hmm. these tires with this fluid in it, the balance factor really is advantageous. It really helps and it really works. Yes. Very much yes. so. Yes. So I did that for a while, got used to that, got comfortable. And then once I realized my limitations and what I could and couldn't do, mm -hmm. I was good to go, free as a bird. Awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. nice. Yes. So I want to show yeah. the brothers what's necessary before you start cutting. I'm going to turn it on so I can raise up the bucket. Now usually, what you normally want to do is not have the bucket on when you're bush hogging, especially when you're going on the graves, on the hills. Well, it, it obstructs your vision. It, yes. it, 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 it obstructs your view, mm -hmm. so, it's, so it's difficult that way. Yeah. yeah, that's a factor. And also, the balancing. I noticed that it's kind of a counterweight, mm -hmm. in a matter of speaking, too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're trying to cut on certain areas in certain parts of the land. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be showing a, an example here on this flat level ground so it won't be an issue. So one thing that one thing in, 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 in the safety aspect that someone will notice right away, you're familiar with your machine. Yes. And you know it's got safety points on it mm -hmm. that you can start it 
and be standing off of it. A lot of tractors, when you start them, yes. they're going to start moving. Yes. Or there'll be yes. motion to them. So yeah. they're going to ask that you always sit in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. be always where you can put your foot on the brake, et cetera, et cetera. That's right. The newer tractors have different safety mechanisms yes. that don't allow that to happen. So yes. just so when people are watching and they see you starting it and you're not sitting in the seat, mm -hmm. they know that. But you can't do that with every tractor. That's right. And that's a very good point, brother. This mm -hmm. one, I can start it, it won't budge. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good feature. So I'm going to start it up. Uh, now this is one safety factor that we have to always consider. I'll pull this all the way up. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to put it down. Mm -hmm. That's good enough. Now I'm doing this because the first thing I was told at the dealer, mm -hmm. and this, this man repeated this probably five times. I'm going to repeat something else he shared with me that he repeated five times as well. But he told me initially, each time you use it, each time you cut, mm -hmm. you have to clean out this filter in here. Okay. So we come under here. I want you to get this, brother, if you can. Move this grill out the way first. Then we pull up the hood. As I bump my head, talking about safety, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the reason I stop here is because you're not supposed to have this all the way up over your head. And at, at some point, all the safety stickers got, you know, over the time, course of time and using the thing over and over and getting brushed against and the weather, sitting outside, all the safety stickers are removed. But I was going to show you where it actually gives an illustration of not to do that. So with this, you simply pull it out, brush it off. Now to let them know that screen is just in front of your radiator. Yes. So it's a pre it's a pre-screen to block a lot of the leaves and a lot of the matter that's going to be loose in the wind so it doesn't congest your radiator and, and allow the machine to get hot. Exactly. And I learned that actually one day I forgot to clean it and uh, it was a very hot summer day. It had to be 95, 100 degrees. A lot mm -hmm. of stuff was caught up in here. Mm -hmm. And I was cutting for about an hour and I just happened to glance down at the dashboard. I noticed that the temp was up, way up. Mm -hmm. And so I, the first thing I thought of, oh, you know, I didn't clean the, the filter out. So I stopped, cleared it out, blew it out a little bit, and the temp was back to normal within seconds. Awesome. Let me go ahead and awesome. grab the, uh, I'm gonna grab the blower and get this out of here real quick. Okay. So you've got a small blower that you're yes. going to use, huh? Yes, sir. Why would you choose that? Just a few seconds just to kind of get it cleaned out a little bit. Nothing, nothing major. So brother, why would you choose a blower rather than a brush? Because typically a brush can't get all the way in there. And uh, I want to make sure I can get as much of the particles out as I possibly can. Yes, yes. I've used a brush before. It's hard to really get in there and get, you know, get a thorough Cleaning out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right, so you just put it back in, the filter, close the hood, put the grill up, and that's the first thing you have to do. Now, the second thing you have to do, I want to, I want to talk about a few more of the features before we actually get into cutting. Uh, again, we're talking about safety and those things. That, again, if you get a little close here, you got warning here, caution here. Over here you got danger. Let me show this one right here. As far as the bucket having something in it that might flip over and, and kill you, crush you or kill you. That's important. Warning here as far as getting up on the, under the wheel and just this really just common sense, things you shouldn't do to avoid injury or from crushing. 
So the bucket again, usually when I'm doing cutting on the on the heels, I don't have it on there because it can kind of be a counterweight. Something else you want to consider is being aware of your, your territory, your terrain. About a year and a half ago, there was an area where we had a couple of stumps. We've had them cleared out since then. We had about four or five stumps on the property. And there was a stump over there that I, I knew it was there, but it was covered. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it, so I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. So I cut actually right or ran right over it, and it, it bent up the blade, bent it. That cost me about maybe $80, give mm -hmm. or take. Mm -hmm. So that's something else you want to be aware of, where you're cutting, what it looks like. You can't cut over certain things, certain, you know, large tree limbs, large rocks, try to avoid those things. Those things can also bend and, you know, misshape the blade as well. So it's critical to walk your ground and know it. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, or even drive out here, drive your ground. Drive your ground. If you can, yes. yes, to get familiar with what's yes. there. Yes, mm -hmm. So just have to just kind of double check and recheck and be sure. So that's important. But another thing that's very important is keeping everything lubed up. That's the first thing I was told too when I purchased it. Yes. Now we have a, uh, I have a grease gun here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Brother Spencer to do the honors. All Actually, right. I can start here. Let me get my gloves real quick. Okay. All right. Gotcha. We'll set this paper here. Yes, sir. On all of these tools, they have Zerk fittings that will receive the end of a grease gun and allow you to apply oil at central points where there's a lot of movement. Yeah. And if you fail to do that, um, things start getting stiff, they start locking up. Mm -hmm. As you see right here, there's a Zerk fitting for this, this wheel that's always turning, always yes. in motion. Mm -hmm. If you don't put the grease in, you're gonna wear the you're gonna wear the, the attachment points out where the 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 metals and things start getting sloppy and loose and, and yes. not working very well. Yeah. So just apply so this here. They go in easy, they with a little pressure. Mm -hmm. And you hear that snap? Mm -hmm. Snapped in. But you hold them in place mm -hmm, and just, just, just squeeze. And just and just go. Now this one's this one's just a little bit loose mm -hmm. at the fitting. That's why you see the the grease coming out. So let's let's tighten it Amen. like that. Okay, we'll put it back on and snap it and then go and, and let him go. And sometimes two or three or four, you know, here you see the grease coming yes. out at the top? Yes. Yep, the grease is coming out at the very top. So usually five or six pumps mm -hmm. um, get, make, assures you to be able to, to know that you've got oil in that, in that, in that fitting, in that area. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to maybe start it. There's a few more points in there. Okay. So I'm going to grab my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Great. All Excellent. Right. Now remember again, the, um, the fittings are going to be at your points where you've got a lot of movement. We have yeah. one here on the adjustment arm on this side. So you just want to make sure that, make sure that's on there well. Your, your up and down adjustment, you see, I've, I've got grease in there. I'm pushing the older grease out. It's blue. Mm -hmm. It lets me know that I've, you see, camera, you see where this, the, the, the older oil is coming out? That lets you know you've, you've, that, that cavity is full. You've got grease in it. At every point where you have continuous movement, that's where your fittings are going to be. Yes. So in so a lot here, of respects, Brother Spencer, it's yes. a lot like an automobile. Where well, you have to keep it serviced, you do. You got to keep it lube. Yes, all those things are very important. They very, they really, really are. Mm -hmm. Now, this is your adjustment arm for your, for almost any implement you're going to put on. There's the Zerk fitting here. So if you think of all your moving, all your all your moving pieces, that's where you're going to see fittings at. Yes, you can start looking for fittings. Okay. Now, Brother Spencer, you mentioned a word implement, which is very important. A lot of the brothers may not know what that is. Okay. Talk a little bit about the implements. These, these tractors are designed to, to operate with various tools that are going to help you accomplish your job on the farm. Mm -hmm. Rakes, tillers, um, blowers, a, a, a wide array of instruments that, that have been designed to for specific purposes and for general purposes. Yes. So this cutter, this bush hog, is actually an implement. This is an implement. Yes. It's, it's absolutely an implement and, and a critical tool to have for clearing and mowing, especially for heavy structures. Yes. Heavy yes. brush, lots of grass, and they're made at different levels for, mm -hmm. for fine lawns as well as for 
in industrial loose like you're using here. That's right. Now, so, you go ahead, brother. Nope. So just to reiterate w w your point back to service. Yes. Critical. Yes. Service your vehicle. We have to get this service. It's, it's actually pretty convenient because when we first got it, it was brand new. It was at zero miles, or zero hours. Mm -hmm. There's an indicator. There's actually an indicator on the, uh, on the dash there. I'll show it to you. See here? That's 126.3 hours that I've used it since we got it three years ago. Now, when we bought it, after the first 50 hours, at 50 hours, that's 5-0, we had to send it in to get a service. Mm -hmm. After that initial service, now we don't have to get a service again until we hit 200 hours. Okay. So we got like 74, 73.7 hours to go. So that's that's a lot of time in between. It is. It really it is. is. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, so that's another thing. Getting a service, you have to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Now we talked again about safety. Mm -hmm. This is obviously a point of safety here. It is. A safety bar. Yep. Now for things that are overhead, um, a, a bar like this really helps for that reason. Yes. Yeah, when you've got things above your head, some mm -hmm. have canopies, some have cabs on them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I want to go backwards. You mentioned initially when you, when we, when we got out and we filmed this track, you were filming it, yeah. that you chose a brand that was well known. Yes, sir. A brand that had good <coughs> reviews. Mm -hmm. When it comes time to get parts and to get service, if you've chosen something that doesn't have that presence in the market, getting parts can be the blues. That's a good point. It can really be a challenge. That's a good point. Yeah. Same with an automobile, right? Exactly. If you buy exactly. a Saturn, the Saturn no longer exists, mm -hmm. so you're going to have a difficult time now finding things to, to address the needs of that vehicle. Right. Same with the tractor. Price point may be great. I yeah. can get into it cheaply. Yeah. But now remember, everything is going to retrograde. Sure. And when that, when that time comes, it's time to get parts. Yeah. It's all relative. Very important. Okay. So what I want to do now is hop on. I want to walk over here and kind of show people show the people what we're looking at over here. Now this was last year, just before the winter began, late, late fall. As you can see in the middle area here, it was growing, it's a little different, it looks different. There's some vines that are growing up that look different than the sides. That's because I kind of set the, cut the sides right, more regularly so we could have some walking areas, you know, retreat areas, walk the dog areas, etc. This middle portion was grown up. Well, actually, the entire side was grown up. And if you actually turn that way, brother, and look all the way down, actually, this was all grown up. Minimum four feet all the way up to 10 feet high. So you can't cut a 10 foot high area on one pass. It's impossible. So it took me about three passes to get it down this low. The middle area was so rough that I had to do literally four passes. So if you take a look over here, I'm gonna have to go one more path to get this down as smooth as the rest of the area looks. Because that, that growth over there, all that foliage and the, the berry vines are very thick and they're more difficult to cut, especially when they're high. But the bush hog does cut them very, very nicely. So I'm gonna get on it. We're gonna make a pass or two so that you can get an idea of how it cuts, how it runs. You can hear how it runs and I'll show you how I adjust everything over here. Now one thing I always do, I have on my, my glass, my prescription glasses right now, I'm gonna take these off. I always wear protective glasses. It's essential. So I wear protective glasses every time I get in this seat to cut. I always put the seat belt on before I start. Even if I'm cutting on level ground, I make sure that the seat belt is on just for safety purposes. You never know. Then we start it up. Let me show you one more thing, my brother. I didn't want to leave this out. Another thing the, the salesman, the gentleman, hammered into my head when I purchased it was that the RPMs here for the PTO, for the cutting instrument back there, has to be up to 540. And I forgot that a few times. So when it's not up to this point where this yellow mark, and it actually tells you, it's a yellow marker and it says 540. And he told me repeatedly, make sure you're up to 540. The reason is the blade's not gonna cut as efficiently if you're below that. <clears throat> so 
So a few times I went out and cut with it down here like this, down low. And I noticed, I look back, I noticed, or I come back around and do another pass, I noticed that it wasn't cutting as, as finely as it should have. Then I remembered I have to have it on 540. So I'm picking it up right now, 540. And once I do this, you're not gonna hear me anymore. So I'm gonna lower this so I can see what I'm doing, lower the bucket, but not too low where it's touching the ground or where it's scraping on the grass I'm gonna cut. Make sure my brake is off. I'm gonna kick it up to 540. And I'm going to turn on, actually I'm going to turn on the blade now. Let me show them, come around this side, brother, I'm going to show them where I do that. And you always want to turn it on with the cutter up off the ground. So this is the mechanism here. Just turn it, hold it for a few seconds, and it turns on. Now as I raise the RPM up, you start to hear it rev up back there. You hear that? something else the brother something else that I love about this tractor you got to come over to the front probably have to have it in the on position to show you key maybe I just oh there we go all right you see that headlights what does that mean <laughs> that means that I can cut any time of the day and I love cutting at night Oftentimes, my wife will be in during this time of year when it gets the sun goes down a little early. She'll be preparing our meal, our supper, and uh, I'll be out here in the dark cutting. I love it. And sometimes even after supper, I'll come back out, cut some more. It's quiet. It's very quiet. It's very relaxable. It's, it's serene. It's therapeutic. It really is therapeutic. So you can cut anytime, as long as, again, like Brother Spencer mentioned earlier, as long as you know your terrain and know the surface and know your area so you won't bump into anything. I don't have anything to worry about out here. There's nothing out here but, but the grass and the, and the growth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to mention something, brother, about the best time, maybe, that the brothers and sisters should mm -hmm. think about making mm -hmm. this kind of major investment. Right. I think before you come out, before you purchase your property, once you purchase your property and yeah. you're anticipating that movement, yeah. even before that point, it's a great time to get these vehicles, to get these tools, mm -hmm. finance them, get them paid for, so that so that as you move you've got the tools that you need to work with yes. for pushing snow critical yeah clearing the driveway yeah um limbs fall down clearing the road and mm. moving things out of the way yes yes the bucket gives you a tremendous tool that if you don't have it you'll miss it tremendously yeah. a lot of people buy a tractor ignore the fact of having a bucket on it or a lift yes the hydraulics are unbelievable mm -hmm. the flexibility it's afforded me is through the roof i mean so many times i have to take something that's either 
you know, high volume, where I have to keep taking multiple trips back and forth to the truck, putting it in the back of the truck, and then physically having to labor and take it off the truck, mm -hmm. drive it to another area of the land, do whatever I'm doing. But this, mm -hmm. I can do it all in one or two scoops. I put it all, put a lot of it in here. Yes. Drive this over, just dump it out. Mm -hmm. Whatever I have to do, I can move mm -hmm. soil, I can move compost, mm -hmm. rocks, bricks, anything else. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's so flexible, right. and it's part of the, the deal. You can't forget, you can't neglect it all. Right. You know, another choice that you made for the tractor, but you didn't mention it. But I know you did made a deliberate choice to make sure you had four wheel drive. I did. The the difference between having a two wheel drive tractor and a four wheel drive tractor is nighttime yeah. and daytime. Yes, indeed. So when it comes to pushing, when it comes to pulling, when it comes to working with the tractor, mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's, it's a like replacement. Night and day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 essential, brother. It really is. And that was a that was a selling point for me too, that I had a choice to do that. Yes. So this is priceless. I would highly recommend it. The Lord is faithful. It was an investment, but God provided, and we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 11:1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes. So faith is. The word is is, is critical. That means present tense. That means faith is. That means right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not future. That means we pray by faith that God has already done it. Yes. And we just wait on Him. Yes. He knows when and he knows best. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He does. Yes, sir. He does. He does. Well, I want to look at another tool. If we haven't overlooked anything about this, I think we pretty much covered it all. I think we have. Um, yes. I want to take a look at another tool that's almost as important as this one. Mm -hmm. It's on a smaller scale, but I think you'll appreciate it. Let's get to that right now. All right. Good. All right. So, Brother Spencer, this mm -hmm. is... Zero turn. My, zero turn. This is my wife's toy. The right. tractor is my toy. All right. Of course, there, there are two toys. Um, same situation. We had another mower we brought with us from our first country move to mm -hmm. Tennessee. A lot of you know my testimony. We moved to the country twice from, from California. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we left this in storage for four and a half years before, we, before the Lord brought us back to the country here in Tennessee. So we had that mower. And we realized that it was taking up a lot of time mowing, more than we needed to have taken up. Mm -hmm. You know, time is important. It is. It is. So we did some research, and we realized that this was on the market. We had seen it around the countryside. We drive around, see people using it out on their property, their land, or people even at businesses in the little small towns cutting in front of the bank or Walmart or wherever. So we thought it was an interesting configuration. So we did some research and found out it was known as, commercially, a zero turn mower. So we said, okay, we'd like to have one of those. Mm -hmm. So did a little praying. The Lord opened the door and we got one. So this has been, words can't express the time you save with these. Yes. You literally can mow going any direction. It's multi-directional. North, south, east, west, front, back, sideways, and uh, you can cut as you're turning, as you're moving back and forward. So needless to say, that saves you a lot of time as opposed to having to stop, turn around, do three-point turns on the regular, you know, mm -hmm. conventional mm -hmm. mower. This does a lot more for you. Now, you've mentioned something about four times now. You've talked about saving time. Mm -hmm. And one thing people oftentimes does not realize, when you're in the country, the list gets yes. longer. Yes, it does. There's so many tasks that you have to attend to in a matter of a day's time. Absolutely. And to have efficiency, is it's critical. Yeah, that's yeah. the key word, is efficiency. Mm -hmm. So they bought it here and dropped it off. Of course, we didn't know initially what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So the gentleman was kind enough to give us a little test run. Okay. Gave us a little, you know, a presentation on it, a demonstration. and. I think I got on it first. Actually, I think a brother was visiting us, and he got on it first, if I remember correctly. It's been a few years now, about three years, but there was a mm -hmm. family here visiting us at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, he bought it here while they were here. So after a few go-arounds, maybe 15, 20 minutes, you're an expert. It's not nearly as complicated as the tractor. So uh, one thing about it that's, that stands out, I'm sure, first of all, that you see is the toggle arms, the directional arms. This is what propels you either forward or backward. So let me demonstrate briefly, and I'm gonna get into a lot more of it also. So you sit in it, I'm not gonna actually take it for a spin yet. You bring these down, and you push forward to go forward, 
you pull back to go back and you can actually push one or the other to turn yourself left or right or to back up and go backwards left or right as you're cutting simultaneously so that's the beauty of it really it it's really nice. is yeah. it's very nice so this here allows you to modify the length of the cut so you can start you put your foot here on this mechanism and push forward you pull up here on this lever and that's what allows the blade or the deck to go down to be able to start cutting the grass so you pull it back up and lock it in with your foot to allow yourself to be able to change the level of the cut so if you're cutting a little higher grass you want to start at a higher level the highest level is the number five push this in there's actually two levels of holes here one here and one right underneath at this point you're at the highest level you want to get a closer cut, obviously you go down to a lesser number. You can go down to three. If you want to get a real fine cut, have that, for lack of a better term, that city cut. Mm -hmm. You come down to a 1.5, cut it as low as you can. We typically don't go this low usually. Mm -hmm. I say on average we, we go maybe 1.75, maybe two to get it as low as we can. But 1.5, you start scraping up dirt too. So, okay. and, so you don't... And rocks. And rocks, that's absolutely. Rocks, very, very good point, brother, very good point. A byproduct of this, and I didn't mention this when we talked about the tractor, is you can collect what we call green manure. I'm sorry, green covering, right? A green manure. Yeah, green manure. Green manure. That you can definitely use. Yes, the so old dead grass is actually compost. It is. And we use it, we save it, we gather it up, and we reutilize it. And A lot of nitrogen in yes, that, as yes. well as the other components, so it works out really well. Amen. Yeah. So you can get a lot of that, especially with the bush hogging, because it's left, it leaves a nice layer all over. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it leaves a nice layer actually on top of the bush hog cutter behind you. A nice big thick you know, pile most of the time when you use it. And you can utilize that in the garden as well. Mm -hmm. So okay. let's start her up. All right. So this is the, actually the key. This is the key. This is the ignition here. Now I notice one thing you have your side chute up on this side. Yes. Yeah, for easy release. For easy release, yes. You have an option to either have it down or up. We prefer to keep it up. Again, we touched safety on the on the tractor. We did. Safety is critical on this as well. Mm -hmm. When you're walking around and people are in the area, your feet, managing your feet, critical. So that mm -hmm. they're not underneath the deck or the deck, it's the, the unit isn't running. Yes. And you get your feet underneath. Yes. Um, it's a heavy vehicle. Yeah. Very, now, very heavy. We also talked about the fact that that tractor has a lot of features that allow for safety without you even have to really engage them. Yes. This one is the same. Excellent. Now, if it's running, and I'm going to demonstrate in a second, when it's running, if you step off of it, the motor will automatically cut off, which yes. is a great safety tool. It's yes. a great safety tool. Yes. Also, you can't start it unless the brake is engaged. Okay. The emergency brake has to be on, and I'll demonstrate that right now. Mm -hmm. So this is the key, this is the ignition. If I try to start it with the brake off, it will not start. Once I engage the brake, the parking brake, turn the key, starts right up. All right, and that's the critical. Especially if you have kids in the family running around, and mm -hmm. they might be in the area of the, of the, of the, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, zero turn. It's very important to have that feature. I love it. I love it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stand up. And you're going to see what I... Now with the brake on, it won't cut off. As long as the brake is engaged, it'll stay running. Mm -hmm. But if I'm on it to cut, and I take the brake off so I can start cutting, and now it's in cutting mode, mm -hmm. as soon as I stand up, it cuts off. Yes. Again, safety first. Yep. And I, I love it, I love the concept it, it has. It, it's critical because if you get thrown off of it, mm -hmm. it's not going to run you over or keep moving and keep running that's right if, if that ever goodness forbid that that ever should happen that's right brother that's that's a good point but so i have it right now at two i'm going to put it a little higher because i'm out here on the, the rougher mm -hmm. terrain my, my wife generally cuts around the house area and around the garden which i mentioned earlier is a more finer grass more like your city grass so to speak but out here it's much more rough mm -hmm. so i'm going to put it up to maybe three i'll put it on a three Start it up. Now sometimes it won't start up right away. You pull up on the the choke. Hit it once. Put the choke down. Try it again. Start right up. 
This lever here is for the RPMs. This will get it cutting a lot more efficiently. Up. Down. Usually we cut it all the way up. Break off. So there's the levers. Now, again, both levers are coming forward. They're about to stop. Throw the levers backward. I'm going backward. I manipulate the levers one way or the other to turn left or to turn right. All the way around the spin. Spin that way. And then of course you can spin the other way. Now I'm going to demonstrate the beauty of this thing is that again, like I mentioned earlier, you can cut at any angle. And it, it is a beautiful thing. RPMs up. I'm going to show them how I engage the blade. This is the blade mechanism here. This just simply goes up. I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to get out of your way first so you won't get windswept. I'm going to release the blade deck here. And I'm going to cut. As you can see, as I turn, as I maneuver, it continues to cut. Now I'm going to bring it down a little bit so you can see it get a little closer. That's, that's a pretty decent cut, but I want you to see how low it can get. I'm going to come down to a two. All right, here we go. I'm going to come around here this way so the lens won't get dirty. See that? And that's basically it. Brake on. Key off. Now, Brother Spencer, we mentioned we were discussing the tractor. Mm -hmm. We decided on a certain width of deck, a certain width of bush hog to cover more, more area. Yes. We made the same decision when we bought this. They gave us an option to get, I think you could have, I could have got the three and a half foot or four foot, mm -hmm. and we chose to get the, the five foot. Mm -hmm. uh, which again saves time. You can cut more area more mm -hmm. efficiently mm -hmm. in less time. Yeah, basically it. All focused on the volume of area you've got to you've got to operate with. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. You've got you've got to impact. Mm -hmm. So this is it has another mechanism that I really like as well. Safety mechanism kind of built in. It's kind of a a uh, resistance gravity resistance mechanism that when you're going down a slope or down a grade, mm -hmm. it doesn't allow you to just fly down. It automatically drags. Nice. It creates drag, so you're not going to mm -hmm. run down the hill out of control and kill yourself. Mm -hmm. It won't go any faster than it can go. It just a, it just hesitates and keeps it from going too fast and getting out of control. That's Again, that's a, I believe it's a really really good very, feature. Very very good. Yes. A really nice feature. Now, one thing I will say in regards to safety as well. This is not nearly as safe cutting on slopes and on hills and on grades. You've got to really be careful, especially if it's damp. I tend to wait a few days after a good rain until it drains, unless I'm cutting on a level surface like this. Mm -hmm. But anything that's sloping, even a little, this isn't very good. It's not safe. It won't hold up. So we, we tend to wait and just do the, the level area until it gets really dry, and then we try cutting on the, on the hills. That's a good point. Yeah, it's yeah, a good point. Very important. So It's a heavy vehicle. It doesn't look it like it, but it's heavy. It is very heavy, yes. Now, this brand, we didn't choose this brand for any particular reason. We're not advertising it at all. I believe they had the best deal, if I remember correctly, from three years ago.
And we did some research, and it was a very good brand, very popular. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are several other brands we could have chosen, but they they were having a sale at the time, so we we jumped on it. So again, we brother, good point to check the reviews. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, good point. So we believe this was a very important part of our country experience. Again, keeping the landscape around the property clean, manicured, representing the way the Garden of Eden was manicured. I'm sure and clean and pristine as well, representing the Lord the right way. Amen. Let's move on yes. to our next tool now. There's a few considerations when you're when you're purchasing a greenhouse. Sometimes people ask, well what size should I what size should I buy? I'm gonna suggest that you purchase as large a greenhouse as you're able to afford. But as you're approaching, as you're buying a greenhouse, the more room that you have inside of it, height wise is gonna be a plus for you because you can get tools in. Now, as you look at the greenhouse that's, that's here, brother, mm -hmm. talk about the, the difference in door size and, how, and the advantage that it, that it gives you. Sure, absolutely. Initially, we had a, a standard door. As you can pan over here, we had a door very similar to that door on our, our smaller greenhouse. Mm -hmm. The smaller one is, I believe, 20 by 86, and this one is 24 by 96. Now this one had a standard door like that one, but we realized we were very limited as far as getting equipment in there. Mm -hmm. So things like an excavator or maybe a small size tractor or, or, or maybe a small size tiller device, we were having trouble. So we decided, we made a very, very big decision, decided to have the door removed and replaced. So okay. now we have a sliding door mm -hmm. that affords us a lot more room to navigate bigger and heavier equipment in and out. Okay. So as opposed to opening like a standard door, this way, this mm -hmm. actually slides open. Very nice. Very nice. So the Lord blessed us with these greenhouses about a little over a year ago. Okay. All right. We've been praying about it, which is always step one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was actually over still in Africa, and my wife had come back, and uh, she actually sent me a picture of them already done. It surprised nice. me. Nice. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> So nice. we are right now, as you mentioned, we're mm -hmm. in the middle of winter mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about all the benefits of the greenhouse. I mean, they're, they're countless, okay. countless, beautiful to yeah. have. Now, what's the first thing we do, Saints, this is a question directed to you, when we want to determine what our soil is deficient in, what okay. do we need to do? The, the best thing to do is to get a condition report, mm -hmm. or what we would call a, a lab report of the soil. Send, mm -hmm. send mm -hmm. an, a, a sample in to get yes. an analysis, and it'll give you a baseline, just yes. like you guys did. Now, we did that, and we actually were instructed to take samples from maybe three or four different portions of the land. Yes. Because you can have one area that might be deficient in one thing, and you can go 15 acres over that away, and in some other area it might be deficient in something else. You're exactly right. Yes. Even in even in a close area mm -hmm. as we did with this one you yes. guys pull samples from this area that area and there there's differences that's right as you move around it at a land mm -hmm. the, the, there's, there's marked differences mm -hmm. and you don't need a lot we just put in maybe a the size of a sandwich size baggie mm -hmm. just about a cup it up mm -hmm. yep, just about a teacup mm -hmm. full of soil and we mailed it in mm -hmm. and we had the results it was a very short turnaround maybe a week or two yeah some mm -hmm. some will, some will, some will do faster but you're right within yes. that within that time within frame you'll get a results frame. back so we got a mail i believe we got every Everything emailed, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. and we were able to get a very succinct and a very detailed diagram of exactly what the nutrients were needed to Re replace or replenish in right. the soil. Right. Yeah. Now, there are five that are <coughs> critical, and I remember in your profile, even from a couple of years back, mm -hmm. that you had phosphorus was great in your soil. It was. Didn't need to add anything. That's right. Mm -hmm. But calcium is one that, in most soils, it's a critical element. It's an essential element. Yeah. It has to do with the dividing, the, the cell division of the, of the fruit. It brings tightness to the structure. And when you take that, that fruit off, the, the, there would rather be seeds, you take them off, they will store longer and last longer. Mm -hmm. But each one has its component. The potassium for anything that's going to be fruiting or starchy, yeah. Yeah. potatoes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they've got to have that potassium. All right. Magnesium as an activator. Mm -hmm. you know, And then your sulfur is there also. But carbon and water, of course, water, you can't get rid of water. That's it's, right. It's, 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 it's a critical it's one. A, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And we'll talk about water management later. Amen. Amen. So, so, so let's look at the greenhouse. Oh. All right. So, no limitations here. Okay. The reason you get a greenhouse is because you can actually do gardening 
around the clock, around yes. the year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Year round. Having the greenhouse is giving you a controlled atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Grow. You have an option with a lot of different skins to apply to it. Mm -hmm. You've got a standard, um, you've got a standard greenhouse plastic skin that's on it, and they yeah. make a lot of different variations of mm -hmm. it. But it works well. You have a shelf life of about six years or better with the skin. Yes. yes. Now another thing I want to let's let's step back a little bit. Sure. Let's step back a little bit and, and let's and, and let's look at where you place this greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And I want to just to kind of. Mm -hmm. Embellish, which you mentioned a second ago about the shelf life of yes. the skin. Yes. There's a brother that lives not too far from here who had a greenhouse, who mm -hmm. has a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. About five, five and a half years in, mm -hmm. his skin began to deteriorate. And yeah. after, after a while, it just all kind of tore up and blew off. Mm -hmm. So that five, six year window, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, is basically all you have to work with. But you can replace mm -hmm. it. You can replace it. Sure. But also when you're choosing the skins, you can, you can choose one of the, the, the best of what you can get mm -hmm. so that you, you forestall that event of having to replace the skins. And, yes. and you can go upline on that and mm -hmm. you, can get, you can get coverings that, that will go out beyond that point. Mm -hmm. But a point that I wanted us to, to look at when you step back from the greenhouse, look where, he, look where the green, this greenhouse is set. Mm -hmm. Do you see any trees nearby? Do, no. do you see any, any trees that maybe could blow the limbs, limbs could come off and mm -hmm. they could fly into the greenhouse? And do that's all that? by design. And they can, as my brother uh, pans that's, back and forth, left and right, mm -hmm. it was by design that we had them placed right in the midst of an area that was not affected by those things. Yes. That's very important. Yes. When you, when you set your greenhouse and you make a decision to set your greenhouse, make sure that all the trees you clear back away from mm -hmm. it for many reasons. You don't want limbs that will come off and blow. When they hit that skin, they're going straight yeah, through it's it. over. Yes. Also, you don't want the shading that trees are going to, that they're going to cause you. That's you, right. You don't want that shading yes. effect. Yes. But anyway, I just wanted you to see that and notice that because it's, it's, it's a serious, it's a serious aspect and very, very critical. Yes. So now we've got an atmosphere, we've, we've, we've constructed an atmosphere that's, that's one that, that's controlled. Yes. The temperatures are, the temperatures are controlled in here. Mm-hmm. Certainly it's hotter inside than it's going to be outside because so. of because of the solar gain. Sure. You yeah. want to talk about the ventilation a little bit? Yes. Before we move in? Yep. Now, now these are louver. Now we've got a louver mm -hmm. to the outside and a fan to the back. Having airflow and air movement in and out of the greenhouse is really is really, really yes. critical. Yes. Now yes. Now on top of that we mm -hmm. have the sides here are rolled up. Mm -hmm. We have rollable movable sides down here at the bottom mm -hmm. on each, each side. Mm -hmm. There's a film here, so it appears as though they're down, but there's just a film that's it's, covering all the way down on both sides. A, you've got a screening there. That's what it is, a screen, yeah, you've yes. You've got a screening, and the screening is very oh. tight. It's a very, very tight screening so that it prohibits insects from passing through that screen, but yet yes. you get an airflow and you get a movement of airflow Amen. through it. That also is a very, very valuable aspect inside of a greenhouse. It's critical. Even now, I think it's about 69 or 70 degrees now mm -hmm. outside, mm -hmm. but we can tell eas easily in here it's much warmer. We're, we're way over that. We're much, way over much that warmer. Inside. And that's with the, with the sides rolled up. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're down and there's no ventilation going through, even at 70 degrees, it can be almost 100 in here. Yes. So you know how the summer can be. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's 95 degrees outside, mm -hmm. it can be, and we don't have our thermometer here uh, at this point. But it can get up well over 140, easy. Easily, very easily, easily. inside the greenhouse. Yes. It can do that. Now, I like the fact that we've got lots of headroom. Mm -hmm. If you notice above his head, above my head, you've got plenty, plenty of room. Yes. You can move to the side of the greenhouse, mm -hmm. and you can walk alongside, and you can, and you can tend to the sides of the greenhouse without yes. impacting. Yes, and that's very important. So the floor area of the greenhouse, you're able to use it as you as you purchase a larger yes. and a taller greenhouse. So less less walking area and more planting area for food. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Which you want to maximize all the space that you can. That's right. Now we talked about the effectiveness of bacteria at 40 degrees to mm -hmm. 140 degrees. Mm -hmm. So within a controlled atmosphere like this, when you have organic matter in the soil and you've got things, uh, organic matter to break down, mm -hmm. the bacteria are active. They are always active. Yeah. Very seldom are you hitting a period of time where you're 
below freezing mm -hmm. inside of a inside of an area like this. Yes. So winter gardening becomes one that's very effective in a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Now, placement of a winter greenhouse and placement of a su summer greenhouse is going to be a little bit different. Or if you do, if you don't set a, a greenhouse up for winter planting specifically, because remember the sun is lower in the sky as it makes its approach in the winter time. That's right. In the summer, it's dead over the top and it's coming over. It's coming over the earth. Mm -hmm. But still, even if you're, you just have a, a greenhouse that's set as this one is mm -hmm. for summer growing. In the winter time, you're going to have value as well. Amen. Yes. Yeah, you're really going to have value. Having the tool yes. is, is, is really critical. And again, we mentioned a few minutes ago, we're, we're going over now some what I call passive tools mm -hmm. where you're not actually using them hands-on day right. by day, yes. but they're working for you while they're here. Absolutely. So, Brother, I want to I want to go to a, to a text that's, I know it's a favorite for you. In Proverbs chapter 24, in verse yes. 27. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Where the Lord counsels us to make ourselves fit, mm -hmm. where? Mm -hmm. In the field. In the field. Yes. To make things fit in the field and then build your house. And afterwards. Afterwards. Right. After, yes. after that fitness has been achieved. Yes. So based on that verse, what is the Lord telling us is most important? What's going on outside first. Yes. You have to eat. Yes. Then tend to what's going on in the house. Yes. yes. Now, I've got to ask you a question, those that are listening. Physically, if you want to get fit, does that happen overnight? Hmm. Does that happen within one or two days? Is it a process or is it something that's done very quickly? It takes time. It's a process. So if we're counseled to make things fit in the field, there's a process to do it. That's right. When you begin with virgin soil, there's a process to get that soil healthy so that it's appropriate, so that it's 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 workable mm -hmm. and it works for what you're trying to achieve and that's growing food yes so the lord is counseling us to make ourselves fit make the soil fit to work with mm -hmm. and then think about the other things that's primary yes it's the a the b and c mm -hmm. nothing standing in front of it nothing second in line that's right. nothing third running up yes it covers all three positions. We're counseled that agriculture is the A, B, C, A, B, and C of industrial education. Yes. Now, when I look at the word industrial, that tells me that's a derivative of the word industry. Yes, it is. So we can make a living mm -hmm. off of the soil. Yes. Which people did, of course, throughout the Bible. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. The soil, <clears throat> when you when you approach it scientifically, mm -hmm. it's going to give you returns abundantly. <clears throat> Amen. Because it's based on a mind that's infinite. Yes. An infinite mind designed the soil. That's right. And he designed that the aspects be in place. Mm -hmm. Over time and over the years in different places, a lot of those aspects are missing. Yeah. But if we make a point to make sure that they are there, the returns. Oh yeah. The returns are huge. The returns infinite. are huge. Infinite. Now, so, now we're in the midst of winter. Yep. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're maybe a month or so away from maybe a month and a half from spring. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be, we're actually preparing and wrapping up to get food inside this greenhouse and the other one. Mm -hmm. We've done a little tilling and we have our, as my brother swings over here, we have our compost mm -hmm. piling up. I put this in here about a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start putting food in the ground very shortly and right. a lot of it. Yeah. Now when you're purchasing compost, I just want to make a note, when you're purchasing compost, look for compost that's actively decomposing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of product that's sold as compost, that's sold as topsoil that isn't. Yeah. And as you move around, you'll see that. Be careful that when, if in a vegetable grow, that you're not putting pine mm -hmm. bark derivatives or pine wood derivatives, mm -hmm. because of the acidic, the acidity, <coughs> the, the acidicness of your conifers and trees of that fashion. Yes. You will completely ruin your growing area using organic matter, using plants like that, unless you're going to grow blueberries. Good counsel. Um, Good counsel. So the organic matter that I know that you've gotten is actively decomposing. It is. I've seen it. We've worked with it before. Mm -hmm. That has to be incorporated in a profile of soil that is very, very vacant of nutrients. This has been, this has been worked before, so it's building. The, the process of building, of building, yeah. and then we'll get to a point where we've got it. We don't have to till anymore. That's right. We can, the soil is vibrant. We can cover crop it. We can pull that off. We can use it as green manure. We can plant into it, and we will be at that point 
yeah. with these greenhouses, they'll be very, 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 very healthy. And we've been working this area for six years since we got here. Okay. First spring, we started working this area, and then we put the greenhouses on top of it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's getting close. Excellent. It's getting real close. Excellent. Yeah. Now, one thing inside of a greenhouse, if you're going to use it for a grow, just as outside, you want to map where you're going to plant whatever you're going to plant. Mm -hmm. Put it on paper, put divisions, okay, in the back I'm going to do tomatoes this year, this mm -hmm. is 2021. Mm -hmm. I'm doing tomatoes in the back third, I'm doing this in the, in the second half, and I'm mm -hmm. doing this in the third half. Or however you make your lines. Yes. So that next year you don't repeat and put things in the same place yes, you have where you had them before. It's, it's the rotation, yeah. absolutely. Sister, Sister Bridges is, is very highly aware of that, mm -hmm. and that's exactly her plan. By yes. the way, I, I do need to mention that this is, we're in the midst of what I call my wife's love child is Angel Food Farms. Great. And yes. We never intended on doing that when we moved out here from California. It was never in our thought process. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of years, the Lord just planted it in my wife's head. Amen. This is what I need you to do. Amen. So we, Amen. we consider it a mini farm. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing major expanding, as you know, mm -hmm. in the coming mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. So I'm gearing up physically. I'm getting, asking the Lord to get my body and my mind together because I know yes. based on what's going on in the world, we need to have food, oh, not just for ourselves, but for other people, the community, the yes. church, everybody. Yes. People are afra afraid and fearful of what's taking place in our world right mm -hmm. now, particularly mm -hmm. those that are living in the cities. Yes. We're basically, brother, unaffected, and you know, mm -hmm. we're unaffected living in the country. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in a small rural town, like the, the towns that are around us in the immediate area, mm -hmm. it's different than being in a major city. It is. But at some point, even the small towns are going to feel the crush. They will. So the only real refuge, if I can use that term, is to be in a country, totally rural environment, mm -hmm. which is God's plan in the beginning. Amen. God planted mankind in a garden. Mm -hmm. The first original murderer, the, most, the first homicidal maniac in human history was Cain. Yes. He created, in Genesis chapter 4, he built the first city. Mm -hmm. So every city from that point forward has that same sinful uh, spirit mm -hmm. embedded in it yes. by nature. Yes. Because that's how the person who initially created the first city was. That was his, that was his, his makeup. Congestion brings on a different it does. living and a different doing sure when, does. when people are put in congested areas. Yes. It, it does. really does. Absolutely. Even Animals in zoos That's act right. out of character because they're in congested yeah. areas. Science bears that out, absolutely. Yes, brother. We weren't made to be put in prison cells. And in a lot of instances, life in the city is very similar to that. Mm -hmm. We might not realize that, mm -hmm. but it really has limitations on how we should live. God's plan wasn't for us to live that way. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 So yes. let's continue about this the benefits okay. of, of this tool, this passive tool. One of the one of the dynamic things about having a greenhouse is it allows you to start the season early, mm -hmm. it allows you to get your harvest moving and moving faster than anybody outside that's just doing a, doing an outdoor grow. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the dynamic areas because you can have tomatoes by the time people are just planting tomatoes. That's right. That's right. You can have eggplant and all the other greens, lettuce, almost throughout the year in some regions. Greens, cabbage, and everything. Cabbage, all those things can be in and growing and you can be enjoying those throughout the majority of the year. And the goal is, is to take management of what we what we consume. Yes. Now speaking of that, my mm -hmm. wife did have a big cabbage patch over she there in did. the corner last she did. year. Boy. Um, I didn't intend to plant them here, uh -huh. but I decided, let me just plant a few in here and see what happens. And just see how they'll react to the How they'll react, how to, they'll the, react to the greenhouse. The heat, mm -hmm. uh, during the, the, uh, the spring. It's, the, these, these plants look like they're really, really, really happy. They are Look at happy. the leaf on this. Can you can you, I mean, as far as I can I open my hand, the leaf is still bigger. Mm -hmm. This is wonderful. Yes. Look at the size of the leaf. The insect pressure is, is, is minimum to none. And the plants are just thriving. Yes. They're really, really, they're really, really thriving. Yes. Now, they're, these are ready to cook, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I have some in the other side <laughs> of the garden, so I, I have a little okay. bit much. I am going to share. Okay. Yes, 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 they were so nice. They were yes. so big. The leaves were very, very, very healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the advantage of having a controlled atmosphere. That's right. You mentioned that the aspect of industry yes. in talking about the ABCs. Yeah. That's another benefit of a greenhouse. It will allow you to earn extra income. Absolutely. 
because of the plant, the, what you're growing, whether you're value adding it mm -hmm. or you're selling it fresh. You have, you have two sides to work yeah. with it. That's right. You can create products from it or you can sell the fresh product that's coming out of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a critical area and we'll spend time on that another, at, at another point. Sure, we will. Talking about the industry side and the, and the income side yes. of having these tools. Yes. And, and using agriculture as a point of income. Sure. So we can become self-sustainable. And that's, an, of course, a key point. We know that at some point every earthly support will be cut off. I noticed that around the greenhouse you've been very careful to close in the sides all around. Yes, yes. What, share with people what, what the purpose was for that. Well, initially it was for rodents. Then we found that our cats like to come in here and, and stretch out and relax okay. in the wintertime and get warm. <laughs> okay. So we uh, made it a point to close everything in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because rodents can climb in, you know, climb under and squeeze through very tight areas. Right. So we made a point to get that, you know, taken care of so they can't get in because mm -hmm. they, well, they like to eat vegetation just like we do. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, so you have to close those entry points off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about the screen. If, if, our, if the cameraman can, take a, can, can, can get a close-up of the screen, you'll notice that it is fine, 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 yeah. fine. It's not like the, the screen on your screen door. Yes in a normal house. <clears throat> it is the the apertures or the openings are are far, far, far tighter. They are. One thing about greenhouse management and planting in a greenhouse, when you you really want to protect the as your your coming ins and your goings out. When you see insects on plants in a greenhouse, it's an emergency. That's right. Because they're in an enclosed atmosphere. There's no predators inside. That's right. They're, j they're alone. Yeah. And they will multiply in numbers that are just unbelievable. So yeah. when you see them, yeah. right away, you want to get on top of management yes. to make sure that you eliminate them so that you can continue moving forward. If you ignore it, oh my goodness. Got eradicated. Yes. It's funny you mention that because actually this morning I was in here doing a few things mm -hmm. and I noticed over there on the pile of the compost there was a, a dead bird. Okay. So apparently he must have flew in one day. Maybe I had the door open for a few minutes while I was doing some other you know, responsibilities out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He must have flown in and once, mm -hmm. he, once he's in, the door closes. That's it. Yeah, you it's know, No air, no food, it's and it's, it's over. over. And, yeah. and the intensity of heat during the daytime. Yes, oh my yes. goodness. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't have yeah. a chance. Yeah. That's true. So Let's talk about the fans, brother. Okay. Um, now, now you've got air movement inside of a greenhouse is critical. Yeah. A greenhouse will, will build heat and it's and it's described in terms of joule watts per second 14,000 joule watts per second of heat is building from from just, that's a solar gain inside of a greenhouse right. or higher 14 14,000 or higher so right. air movement or air exchanges are very very critical to pull the hot air out and bring fresh and cool air in yes. and keep that motion moving yes so Having great fans, and you see, you've got a large commercial fan at the yes. at the end of the greenhouse. Yes. And the Lord um, greatly blessed us with this, actually, at no at no cost. Praise the Lord, brother. A couple of them, yeah. and a heater as well. Okay. Okay. So the Lord will move on people to get to you to get the products you need to keep mm -hmm. your get your garden going and moving in the right direction. He awesome. will do that. Awesome. Amen, brother. And I see this has a louver. It's a louver fan, so that so that it's not wide open, so insects don't have a pathway that way to coming through it. That's right. And oftentimes you can screen behind your fans mm -hmm. so that the air that it's pulling is pulling within a, a, a area that's, 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 that's protected as well yes. and not blowing insects um, right into the greenhouse. Yes, sir. But the air exchanges are very, very important. Mm -hmm. Now also even in the structure of the greenhouse as you, as you put it up, you have a, a high tunnel, what's considered, it's called a high tunnel. Mm -hmm. And it allows you also with the purlins or with the structure that you have, you can be planting on the ground and have things moving on the ground and then intermittently you can even put baskets of flowers and have flowers moving. Yes. Whether it's herbs or rather they're edible flowers yes. or whatever, you can have those things hanging and growing also yeah. within this space. My wife plans to do all that. This is going to be a full, you bar you're, you'll barely have room to walk. That's okay. Yeah. That's great. Right. That's right. Good. Because it's a production center that will, that will actually, it'll, it'll, it'll take all of that. That's right. It'll, it'll take all of that and you want to maximize it. So always consider the, getting a greenhouse in as large a greenhouse as you can possibly get. Mm -hmm. You won't you won't be happy. You won't, you won't be sad for you doing it. No, you yeah. won't regret it. Yeah, you won't regret now it at all. You mentioned 
with the tractor, how I love to cut at night. Yes. We have the blessing of the head headlights on the tractor. Mm -hmm. That's something else we plan on adding is, is lighting in here. Okay. So we can actually come out here. And we've done that in the garden outside mm -hmm. over the years since we got here. Mm -hmm. We'll pull up with the, the vehicles and the headlights on full, you know, high beam. Mm -hmm. and we'll actually garden at night, water at night, yes. do different things. Yes. So we plan on doing the same thing in here, coming in here. Mm -hmm. Whatever hours, if we're up early with the Lord, you know, with our mm -hmm. devotion, mm -hmm. if we feel mm -hmm. impressed to come out here and do a little work, you know, mm -hmm. three, four in the morning, mm -hmm. why not? Yes. You know, we yes. can see, we can work. Absolutely. Yes, sir. The lighting is going to allow you to take care of some of the things that during the heat of the day you wouldn't otherwise want to be in here yes. working and yes. doing. Yes. But also, as you get toward the winter months and the sun is lower in the sky, we've got shorter days, mm -hmm. less sunlight. Plants need a certain volume of light to actually to, to develop and to grow very, very well. That's right. So having agricultural lighting or full spectrum lighting for those yes. that are vegetative works very, very well inside of a greenhouse mm -hmm. and you're going to need them mm -hmm. if you're going to continue production 365 days yes. of the year so or even you know, three quarters of the year. Yeah. Yes. So we're not talking about just basic halogen lights or basic no. light bulb. We're talking no. about specialty lights yes. specifically for a work like this or an environment like this. Right. Just so the saints understand that. Amen. Yes. And with LED lighting available now, it's it, the prices are coming down and they're they're becoming more approachable. Yeah. Initially, they were just they were so high, mm -hmm. but LED lighting is is um, is 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 now approachable. The power consumption is a lot less than going to a metal halide or a mercury vapor, which we're very, very hungry for light and for, for power and for heat right. that they added to uh, as well. So, mm -hmm. so those are great tools now, and as technology keeps moving, mm -hmm. more and more tools are available. That's you, right. You've you got to put those tools to use. You've got to, you got to make a, a prize yourself of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, you, we mentioned uh, covering the soil, covering crops. Mm -hmm. Why don't we take a little walk over to the wood chip pile? Okay. And talk a little bit about that type of covering and what are the pros and cons of, with that. Very, very well. Very, very well. All right. All right. So this is a pile of wood chips. Mm -hmm. It's been building for about maybe, mm, it's been less than a year, maybe eight, nine months. Mm -hmm. We had some work being done up here. We got a tree removed and um, my wife came up with a great idea to ask the workers. It's the local utility company in the area. Mm -hmm. And they had this huge truck with the device on the back, the wood chipper and the, the, all the, the gadgets. Mm -hmm. So my wife said, let's ask them if they'll bring us, you know, spare wood chips or yes. wood chips that they've gotten from other areas in the area, other mm -hmm. residences or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I asked the driver, we had a nice little talk. He said, no problem. Just, I said, bring whatever you got. Wow. We'll just pile it up until we know. And we actually want to keep piling it. Yes. But we haven't seen them lately. I don't know. I'm sure things are different because of the COVID situation. But mm -hmm. he agreed. He said, no problem. He came up, maybe made five or six trips up, dumped it down. <clears throat> and I had a chance to bless the brother with some literature. Amen. Great. Which is great. The, the number one goal, right? It's Amen. always a goal. Give them the third angel's message Amen. of Revelation chapter 14. Amen. Never leave a soul unwarned. Never. The literature yeah. about, you know, coming yes. to Christ. So that's, that, that's the main issue. Yes. Far and above the wood chips, right? A amen. There's an opportunity. Amen. So what are some of the benefits, Brother Spencer? Of well, wood this chips in your garden, the usage and the benefits. It's great to see these because they're they're gonna do many things for you. They're gonna they're really gonna do many things for you. With these wood chips setting here, now remember we talked about the temperatures that bacteria are working. So now as we pull back the top layer. You can see, you can see the breaking down. Step you, over a little for the sun. Yep. Let me get, let me get back a bit. Yep. You can see how the leaves are rotting from the moisture, and they're breaking down. When you get down into the core of these, it just the, the temperatures start building and start getting warmer and warmer and warmer. But as you look, no matter how far you go down, you still see the browning, the darkening. Look at, look at the breakdown. You can still tell the breakdown that's going on from the black. It almost looks like volcanic ash in a sense. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Which is another good way to yes. use your soil. Right? Yes, it is. Now, the great thing about the wood chips are in your pathways and in the garden and in between grow boxes, etc., etc. They're yeah. great to lay down to smother and to keep weeds from merging up through them. That's right. So that's so they're a great benefit for that. Yeah. When companies are doing line work or 
for the for the power companies or mm -hmm. utilities and they're in your area mm -hmm. great way to get the yeah. chips tree service companies when they're working same thing try to get the chips from deciduous trees versus the conifers and you guys are loaded with those Amen. versus versus the pine trees yes. so it's it's a great product to get let it rot down and the benefit is going to be you're going to cover the pathways make it hard for seeds to emerge because a lot of seeds a lot of seeds are solar sensitive. Mm -hmm. Most plants and weeds in the wild are, are dropping seeds and they're within at least the first either one or from zero to maybe four inches under the surface. Right. Many seeds are just on top of the surface. Right. And depending if the seed is solar sensitive, like for instance, a lot of your lettuce seed is solar sensitive. Mm -hmm. If you plant them too deep, they'll never merge. Mm -hmm. They'll never come up. Mm -hmm. But if they're on the top of the soil and they, and they can get the sunlight or they can get the UV rays from the sun, yeah. they will sprout. Same thing with a lot of seeds that are, that are indigenous to areas. In a forested or grown up area, if it's in an area where light, can, light transmission will come through, those seeds will sprout. Those that are in darker shady areas, they won't come up. They won't sprout. So, so it's great to be able to have a cover that even prohibits them if they do sprout, they can't merge up through it. That's right. And then with it being there, you're getting the breaking down of materials yes. and that's putting food back into the soil around. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so, again, so it's a, it's a win-win. So again, we just, we just asked the local power company, local utility, mm -hmm. and uh, they said yes, they didn't blame. So I say don't be bashful, don't be shy. Pray first and just ask. You'd be surprised what the door can do. You can open the door. Yes. yes. And the cost factor, can't beat it. I can't Not beat at all. it. <laughs> yes. 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 All right, we're going to talk a little bit about um, fruit trees and fruit tree management. Mm -hmm. I, want you to, I want you to open your Bible and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 19, or write that down, okay? The Bible says, When thou besiege a city a long time in making war against it, to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the field is man's life. To employ them in the siege. That's, that's, that's profound. How do you hear that, brother? Mm. Well, this last clause of this verse tells us clearly that even during time of besiegement by an enemy force, you still have food to eat. Amen. That's clear as day. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Very Amen. Forward. So, what God is telling us is that the fruit tree and the nut tree are critical components to have on your farm, on your garden, in your yard. Because they will produce and they'll continue producing. Yeah. Now, one thing about fruit trees and nut trees, what you do during the time when they're fruiting has a lot to do with how they'll start off the next season. Because trees load nutrients in the buds. So, Throughout the season, when you plant them, you want to push them along with nutrients, with nitrogen, with food. And then after you harvest, you want to again give them another feeding yes. of, of nutrients. Because the tree will load those. They'll store them and they'll load it so when they wake up, they open up and they burst with that energy. Right. If you didn't put it, if you don't put it there, their energy when they're, when they're coming back the next season is very, very, very weak. Understood. Now, noticing in this, noticing with this tree, why it's critical to prune. There's a lot of there's a lot of reasons. It invigorates a tree. Number one, which is great, to prune it. But also, you want to manage its growth, and you want to make sure that as it's fruiting, the structure of the limbs is able to handle the weight of the fruit. Fruit is heavy. It has a lot of water in it. So that's why you don't want to leave the limbs just sprawl widely and just just any kind of a way. You want to manage and also you want the fruit to hang or to set and to hang without rubbing against other limbs yes. and to and whatever the now here we've got fruit coming here and here and here. Mm -hmm. 
when this fruit develops, there may be some pruning that we have to do, but this limb is going to, is, is going to manage it very, very well. These limbs will manage it very, very well. The, the buds that are coming out here, and here, and here, these will, be, these will be fruiting, fruit coming here, fruit coming here, fruit coming here. It'll manage, it'll manage it very well. The goal in a tree when you're pruning it is to open it up, allow to get good sunlight to it, space. good space, because your sunlight is, is helping you produce the fruit. Now, we haven't pruned the top of the tree, as you see, mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we will con we'll continue to manage the height and bring it and keep it within a, man a area that's easy to management from a ladder. Yes. This is a full-size tree, so it's going to get large, it's going to get very, very big. So choosing your trees and how you set them out, this is a pear, and you can put blocks of fruit together, so you have common fruit together um, for the sprays and for the management of them, etc., etc. But it's now we have options with the dwarf stock or dwarf, dwarf, dwarf stock for trees, more on your apples, on your and, and other fruit. But the dwarf trees give you an opportunity to have a tree that in three years it's ready to fruit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now let's talk about something, brother, that I think is important. Mm -hmm. You were here about a year ago maybe a little less than a year ago, and we did something that was critical as far as the health of the apple trees. Remember that? Yes. We got the chainsaw. Me and my wife realized that the apples were being poisoned, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They were debilitated, mm -hmm. and they were dying. Mm -hmm. So we, we realized that there were things that were growing around the land that was contributing to that, and that directly was... The cedar. Yes, the cedar, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So we went out with the chainsaw, and we went and cut a, cut a bunch of them down. We did. Of two or three dozen. We cleared everything that we, just about everything that we could find along the periphery. All around, all around the periphery of the land, and uh, that particular the problem. These so, are things you have to be aware of. You do. Sister Bridges had done her homework, and over time noticed that the cedar rust was affecting the apple trees, and it's and it's a killer. It is. I it's a killer. Yeah. yeah. So, so those are just things to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Yep. As you're managing your trees, so pruning, get bringing light to the tree. Sucker management, and these this will this will happen later on. You'll get suckers that'll start growing. They're pulling energy, and and those those will take pruning as well. Feeding the tree always water, food. You you can't plant a tree and just expect it to move right along, and you're going to enjoy fruit. You mean, it, we it, don't, you mean we have work to do, brother? That's work, right. work, brother. We have work to do. We have work to do, okay. brother. We want to make sure the saints are really clear on that. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. So now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you a revelation that the Lord gave my wife about three years ago. As we mentioned earlier, we moved here from California about six years ago. And the first two years we were here, we spent a lot of time in the garden, which you're supposed to do, amen. But we spent a lot of time watering, quite a bit of time out here watering, early in the morning and then in the evening when the sun was going down, the cool of the evening. So every morning during the spring, the summer, parts of the fall, we'd be out here with the holes, watering, practically every night, unless we were out of town. Watering in the morning and watering also in the evening. What we realized, saints, is that it was taking up a whole lot of our time, a lot of our time. So we decided, well, my wife, I should say, decided. She went online to YouTube, watch some videos about how to get around spending so much time in the garden with a watering hose. She came across a video that talked about an automatic drip irrigation system, which I had never heard of. So she looked at the video, she watched the whole thing, 
she came and got me. She said, you can do this. So I watched the video, it was maybe five, 10 minutes long. And then I concluded that I can do this with God's help, right? Not anything scientific at all. So we realized after listening to this brother on this video, we could save a lot of time with this system set up in our garden. So we had to go and buy the parts. Unfortunately, all the parts together to be able to purchase located in one place, one business, was very hard to find. The closest one to where we live is located two hours from where we live, but it was well worth the trip. And I mean two hours one way and two hours back home. So the first thing we had to get is what we call a hose, just a typical hose. This is a hose and it's a half inch wide, half inch in diameter. That's part of it. It comes in a very large, round, circular kind of configuration. It's, it's wound up in a circle. That, along with drip tape. This is the drip tape that you have to use for your system. It has two rows here going down the top. You want it, this is the side that indicates the side where the water is actually going to be emanating from, coming out, dripping from. So I was taught early on that you had to have it facing up. And the reason for that is if you have it underneath any kind of covering, you know, simple covering, green covering, uh, cow chip, I'm sorry, uh, wood chips, which we mentioned a little while ago, or even just a plastic covering to keep the weeds away, if you have it upside down, mud will tend to, to accumulate. It'll block the holes, the passageways for the water to come out. So you're supposed to face it upward so it won't do that. So you have the blue side or blue strip facing up. These are known as the couplers. And I just bought a little basket full of these. These are the couplers. And I'm gonna show you what these are, are made or designed to do in a minute. And this is known as a simple hole punch. This punches a hole in, in the uh, rubber holes, in the water holes. Walk down here with me just for a second. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you all the parts and components you need to put this together. And again, it's a very simple process. I did our whole garden, took me maybe one day. I'm just going to show you the basics. You can learn how to use it. Very, very simple. Very simple. Now, we have a water source here that we had installed after we moved to the country, a hydrant. We actually had three hydrants installed, one at the house, one source at the house, one here, and we have another one I'm going to show you in a few minutes down there. So we have three distinct water, horse, uh, water sources outside of the, the residence, and we plan to actually add much more as time goes on, many more. So this is our water source here, our hydrant. You have to purchase a timer. You can buy this timer at any box store, Lowe's, Home Depot. I think even Walmart sells these, I, I believe. Again, just a timer that you're gonna to use to be able to set a time morning and evening for your system to be activated and start to water your, your vegetation, your garden, amen. So we bought a double, what we call a double coupler. It's basically used for one side, I use it for the water hose for the drip irrigation system and we use the other side just for our standard conventional water hose to do other things with, amen. So what I'm gonna do is come back down here. <clears throat> Again, this is a very simple process. It might look complicated when you first look at it, but it's, again, it's very, very simple. So normally what I would do, we actually are out of the drip tape. We just ran out last fall, and we haven't needed any new drip tape since then, obviously. It comes on this very large spool. And if I remember correctly, it's about it's over a thousand feet long altogether. Now I know that each of our rows here in this portion of my wife's farm, uh, Angel Food Farms, is exactly 109 feet all the way down. So what I do is I unroll it. I actually marked it in my mind how many times, approximately how many times I had to unwrap it, maybe between 25 and 30 times. I unwrap it, then I take it and I walk and I'm gonna undo this one as an example. I'm gonna dis disconnect this all right, so what I do is I take that part that I've unwrapped and I walk all the way down. And this is our dog, our family dog, Zaria. One of our family dogs, Zaria. We have three other full grown shepherds. My wife named them all after African queens. And then one boy. So we have Zaria, we have Makeda, we have Zinzi, and then the boy's name is Kyle. And they're German shepherds and they can get a little, uh, they can wreak a little havoc, so we keep them locked up. 
especially for times like this. So I, I pulled the drip tape all the way down to the end of the 109 feet. So this is the very end. We plant our last, whatever the vegetation is, we plant the last one here. And then I leave a little bit left over and I tie it off at the end. I'm gonna explain later why I do this. There's a reason why I had to do this. So I'm gonna walk all the way back up now. So just imagine now I'm starting this off fresh. I've laid out the drip tape, 109 feet for our garden. I leave a little extra, so it's actually about maybe 113 feet or so. Then I walk back. Beautiful day here in the state of Tennessee. Very unusual day as far as weather. I think it's around 70 today in the midst of winter. Just last week it was like 12 degrees below freezing. The, the temperature was actually 12 degrees. So I'm praising God for this day. So we determined based on where our row is located, the row we're gonna have set up for our vegetation. We've marked that off. I don't do anything again scientific. I can tell by my God-given vision how to line it up. I take my hole punch and I mark the spot with my finger and I make sure that is right at midpoint of the holes, right at midpoint. I'm gonna start it around. And again, this is just for example purposes or demonstration purposes only. This is gonna be a, what I call a dummy hole, right? Because all I'm gonna do after I'm finished with the demonstration is, is tie it off. So I'm gonna mark it right here, right in the middle, and I'm gonna push it till it pops through. And there it is. Let me make sure, let me just double check. So now we have, if I can get a close up on that, we have a hole here. Now I'm going to take the coupler. You see this coupler, this, this side here is made just for, designated just for entry into this hole. I push it in. Again, I can use my hand to do that. Push it in as far as it'll go. Then <clears throat> I take the holes and I place it over. This male part is female to male. And what I'm gonna do here now, to get a better, little better grip, I'm gonna put on a glove because I have to make sure this is tight. So I hold this here, I hold this in here, and I turn this to tighten it. Turn the coupler to tighten it, tight as it can get, so the water won't leak out. Now oftentimes it'll still leak a little, I have to come back and do it a second or sometimes a third time. All right, so I tug on it just a little, make sure it's secure. It's not moving, so we should be good to go. So let me go back over here now. Done with the hole punch. I'm done with the couplers. So now we're going to connect the rest of the components. And we'll see if it works. Amen. Which it should. So what I have to do now First thing I have to do is connect the timer with the water source. So I just simply screw it on here onto the, the end of the hydrant as tight as I can get it with my hand. Again, I don't need a tool to do that. I use human strength. Hand tighten, as they say, right? So that's on securely and firmly. Now I'm going to take this and I have a A ring here. Again, nothing complicated. And I'm going to push the hose on to this little double coupler as tight as I can get it, as far as it'll go. With my hands, I'm going to tighten this ring bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this ring up. Again, nothing complicated, nothing fancy. This maintains a tight grip on this hose fixture. It's a splitter is what it is. It allows you to use more than one device, two devices, two hose devices. So these two levers here are off and on levers. Down is on. You saw a little water come out of there, a little residual water, and up is off. So, of course, it won't engage until I turn on the master source, which is right here. 
the main source of the hydrant. Alright, so everything is in place. Everything's tightened. So now I'm going to take this. I changed my mind about that open, that open coupler over there. We lose pressure if one of them is spewing water out. So I want to, I want to close that off with this and then we're going to engage the brand new strip. All right. So we're going to walk back. So again, I take this, push it on as far as it'll go. Use my gloves for a little better grip. Hold on to it. And I tighten it as tight as I can get it. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes it takes two or three tries to really get it secure. We want, we want no drips, no drips. Drips take away pressure from the rest of the tape. Not only from the designated tape, but the tape in the whole garden, including the raised beds. I'll show you guys the raised beds in a minute. So this has been sealed and cut off. Now we're gonna worry about the one that I'm just now engaging for your benefit. So it's on, it's been hooked up, the hole's been punched, coupler's been placed, the drip tape's been placed over the coupler. I ran it down the 109 feet, the length of the furrow here in our garden. So now it should be ready to go. I engaged the, the holes to the divider, the splitter, which is hooked onto the timer, which is hooked onto the water source. So we should be good. Let's see if it works. So normally what we would do, I'll show you this just for the sake of showing you. So you have several different positions. Right now it's off and you can read it clearly. It says off. You can go to auto, which means it's an automatic set position, whatever you've set it to, to, uh, to start up at, whatever time of day or evening, morning or evening, it'll start at that time. You can set the clock, the actual clock for the time of day. You can see it's 3.13 in the afternoon here, central daylight time, amen, or standard time, I should say. You can set, start the time that you want the drip irrigation to begin. We have it set at 7.30 p.m. Now, we haven't used this all winter, obviously. We haven't used it since, since uh, November. Actually, probably October. This asks you how long, how long do you want the water to drip onto the soil for your vegetation to drink? So you have an option, right? We have it on 60 minutes, you can go, and if you hold it, it goes much faster. You can go as high as you want as far as number of minutes. We generally keep it at about one hour. I'm going to go back down to that. So 60 minutes. All right. It asks you next, how often? How often? How often? Every hour? We have it on six hours. Normally we have it on 12 hours. You can also adjust how many days. Every one day, two days, three days, etc., etc. All right and then we're back over to off. So I'm gonna actually set it on auto, but I'm gonna click manual. Manual will turn it on automatically. All right, so let me turn it on at the source. You heard it engage, the water. Okay, it's on. We have zero leaks. There's no leaking, which is a very good thing. That means no loss of pressure in the field. Everything is nice and tight and secure. All right, so I can hear the water. My drip tape is getting fat, so water's going through. It takes a few seconds to, to, to beef up. Now, you can see this one dripping, but I have it tied off, so it's not going anywhere. So if you can see it, I'm gonna ask you to come down here, brother, with me. If we stop here, you can see just a little bit of water coming out. It doesn't spray out, it comes out very, very slowly because it's watering your, your soil over time. So there's no point, it's not manufactured or engineered to rush out and flood the soil. It comes out just enough. That's why it's called drip tape, drip tape. So it's dripping here as you can see, can you see that? The soil is getting just wet enough. It's dripping. It's dripping here. See how it drips down? Now we're going to go all the way to the end so I can show them 
show you all. See it's dripping here, but it drips very slowly, but it drips just enough, just enough. Now we're gonna go 109 feet all the way to the end. This has saved us time. I cannot even begin to express verbally how much time it's, it saves us. It's a passive tool that I mentioned earlier, one of the passive tools we have here at Angel Food Farms. So even all the way down to the end here, you see it comes out right here between the two blue stripes. It comes out there and it's coming out every, what is that, maybe seven inches, eight inches, all the way down to the end. And it's just enough. These, these things are very scientifically engineered. Of course, it's set up to come out and drip just enough, not to over flood the soil, but just enough to, to feed the soil. Now, the reason I tie this off at the end, I mentioned earlier, is so that the water won't go anywhere. It has to have an ending point, a stop point. So I tie it off right here. And again, it's, it couldn't be more simple. So you, you're probably wondering, somebody's probably wondering, <clears throat> well, if you have the hose going from the water source, from the hydrant, going leading over perpendicular to the garden, and you have the drip tape coming down each row, and normally during the, the actual planting season, we have a row of the drip tape coming down every row, maybe 15, between 15 and 20 of them. And also, before I get to this point, I want to show you something over here. I have another one set up on the other side. So I have a second, drip tape system over here. Now we set this one up for two reasons. My wife had this old whole area here squashing zucchini. This was all squashing zucchini. So I had drip tape coming down this way. Just just a little bit, just a few feet to water those plants. And they really were really were prosperous in this area. But what I've also have a bunch here, here, and also down there. I set up a system in advance for the greenhouse. So what I'm going to do is take the end of this drip tape here. I'm going to run it over here to the greenhouse, and I left just a little, a little opening, just a tiny opening to squeeze through to run the drip tape all the way through to the, the front end of the greenhouse, so we can water the vegetation inside the greenhouse. I'm actually going to add more as time goes on. My wife says she wants between four and six rows of food in there. And we have to leave some room to be able to walk around the sides and maybe one row, walking row down the middle, you know, that's kind of complements the door entry. But she wants more, so I'm gonna add more. But we have to water the greenhouse and we don't wanna spend the time going in there with a the hose. The same as we don't wanna do that, taking the extra time during the day and night to water in the, in the outdoor garden. So we use the drip tape system, the automatic drip irrigation system for the greenhouses as well. And I can't wait to get it in there and get it going and get food in the ground. So let me show you what I was gonna mention a minute ago. Somebody might be asking, well, if you have the, the holes running from the source, it has to end somewhere. Well, how do you keep the water from coming out? What do you do? Well, there's two things you can do. Now, this is the end of the, of the water holes. All we did is bend it up a few times. We wrapped it with some water resistant tape. You can buy this again at any box store. Uh, Walmart, Walmart usually has it. Home Depot and Lowe's definitely have it. Maybe your tractor supply stores, your co-op stores, etc. Wrap it around a few times. The water will not leak. They also sell the plugs. Again, I mentioned they go in right here on the end. Pop them in, they will not come out. They're permanent. I believe we had one but we lost it, misplaced it, the dog got it, I'm not sure. But this works just as good, just as good. So, Saints, this has been a lifesaver. It's been a great time saver. I recommend it for anybody leaving the city. Anybody who wants to set up a system that's reasonably affordable, that works, that is easy to put together, that is very convenient, and most of all saves you time, gives you more time to spend with the Lord and doing other things. I would say with all the supplies and all the components we had to get, the holes, the, the initial water holes, the drip tape system, the couplers, the hole puncher, and the timer. 
all that combined costs maybe about $450, I would say. But again, it's, a, it's $450 that's well worth the investment. You will never regret it. We don't even think about the garden as far as the watering. We set it, we leave it alone, and it's done. Amen. Well, I wanted to take, a, take just a moment <clears throat> as the viewers can see the the structure that you've got put up here yes vertical growing of a lot of your vegetables that are climbers with tendrils mm -hmm. is really really critical absolutely it saves space a better product mm -hmm. once they're once they're up mm -hmm. easier to harvest yes it just provides a lot of benefit and i notice beneath it you put a strip of plastic to yes. inhibit the weeds absolutely and um and that's that critical. also hmm? yeah, that's critical okay that's critical all right just so the brothers will know this is very easy to assemble okay it's not science mm -hmm. you go to your local hardware or local you know again home depot or tractor supply wherever pick up some of these posts here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're very affordable some of the t posts they right usually a t post they usually come in maybe four or six pack mm -hmm. and uh, then you grab some of the, the fencing again it's relatively affordable it comes in a giant roll you have to unroll it Again, tractor supply, these stores, you know, all these local places have these mm -hmm. these, these farm outlets. And notice you've used the zip ties to, to yes. hold it there? Set, set the, the posts up, mm -hmm. run the fence along, and each each post I get the zip ties. You, again, you can find these at Walmart anywhere. Mm -hmm. Time time around to secure them. Mm -hmm. It holds the fence up very nice. And Excellent. these are these are priceless as far as your tomatoes, different yes. things my wife had running along this, this row here. Really came in handy, really helped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes, your cucumbers, yes, indeterminate beans, zucchini, yeah, beans, yes, yep, definitely yep. beans. Um, <coughs> so just it's a feature that's going to save you space, whether you've got a lot of area mm -hmm. or if you've got a small area. Yes, you know to yes. grow in. It really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you mentioned the plastic. Yes, yes. There's a reason for that, Saints. The plastic makes Brother Bridges very happy, <laughs> and the reason is. Weeds, 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 and more weeds. So we've been using the plastic system for the last, I'd say, three years. Mm -hmm. Every season, we lay it down all over the garden. We have a system where we lay it, we punch holes in it, we amend the holes that are in the actual garden area first, mm -hmm. then we lay over the plastic. There are several different variations of that we do. Okay. But uh, it really saves you a lot of headache and a lot of time. And again, we've been talking about time all day. Mm -hmm. So it literally kills weeds. They have no chance to, to come up and grow and choke out the, the vegetation at all. Yes. And that's another parable in the Bible, of course, mm -hmm. Matthew, Matthew 13 again. Mm -hmm. So we have it, I made sure it was underneath the fenced area, underneath the, um, the, the pseudo trellis, if right. I want to use that term. So you don't term. have to worry about weeds None. migrating their way through the trellis None. also. It really make, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it really makes a difference. Excellent. So I would I recommend, you know, everybody has their different system as far as weeds are concerned. Some people mm -hmm. don't mind coming out every morning mm -hmm. and weeding every morning for an hour or so. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, we just don't have the time to do that. Sure. So sure. This, this, this does the trick for us. Well, plastic <coughs> mulch is used on the commercial side a lot. Yes, to, it is. Uh, plastic mulch layers to lay down the drip tape, mm -hmm. come through and lay your plastic down. Yeah. The management is, is, is ideal. Yes, it you, is. There's just no time when you've got big areas to go right. through and pull weeds. Yes. So if you notice, this whole garden section here mm -hmm. is all basically dead. There's nothing here because we had plastic on it throughout the season last year. Excellent. It was covered the whole time, so mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing here. Otherwise, it would be up in, in a flurry. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this is a, just a little sample here, a little sample of what we had on the rest of the, the garden area. Mm -hmm. Little piece of plastic. So you have to cut it, measure it, and do all the things you need to do. And you use your plastic over again. We do. It's not a, it's not a one time use and throw away. That's right. If there aren't too many holes in it, again, you mentioned rotating when mm -hmm. we were in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Based on the rotation of crops, based on how the holes are laid out in the ground already, we mm -hmm. know what areas have been amended. What We don't amend the entire area, we just amend specific rows and specific you know, sections of those rows. Yes. So based on how those holes in the plastic used the previous year line up, mm -hmm. we use it. Okay. If not, we use it. It has a variety of uses around the property. You can use plastic for all kinds of stuff. Okay. You know, covering uh, compost when you go to the place to get it, mm -hmm. cover the truck up. I mean, there's so many uses for it. It's very, very uh, flexible. Okay. Very okay. flexible. I like a point that you brought out. You didn't expand it, but when you're growing, rather than applying amendments to a whole big area, mm -hmm. you can just do it station, planting station by planting yes. station by planting local. station. Local. Yeah, just yes. local to where you're going to grow. Absolutely. It saves a lot of money Brother. on inputs. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. My wife came up with that idea, and we 
we've been doing it ever since. We've been doing it for three or four years. Excellent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I tell you that the, the Saints have something to look forward to with Angel Food Farms. Brother, yeah. I'm praying so. I'm praying so. <laughs> we, like I mentioned earlier, I'm gearing up spiritually, physically for a long year. Okay. Spring, summer, mm-hmm. and fall. A lot of work ahead. Yeah, we're almost there. A lot of work ahead. Yes. And uh, I'm going to be honest, we need help. We need some young soldiers, consecrated soldiers, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. some strong young backs. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're interested in doing this type of work for a ministry, helping out in any particular way, specifically for gardening work and farming work, mm-hmm. uh, all our information, we've been showing you the information to contact us at the end of every every meeting this week, every series, a part of this series, every night of this webinar. Email address, website, phone number, everything is there. Well, you know, it's a great opportunity for those that want to learn to have a hands-on yes. environment to come and work. Yes, it is. And by the time they leave for the season or run two or three seasons, mm-hmm. they'll have proficient the proficiency yes. that, that won't be matched from just reading or looking or visualizing, but when you can actually do it, yes. it makes a big difference. That's a good point because you can actually obtain a horticulture degree online or in a classroom mm-hmm. without having gotten one ounce of dirt on your hands. That's amazing. Where you can come to a place like this and get practical instruction, mm-hmm. hands-on experience, and that's better than any degree at an institution. You bet it is. Absolutely. You bet it is. Praise the Lord, brother. The trades, most of the trades are practical. This is one that's definitely practical. Yes. You got to yes. do it. This yeah. is the classroom. Amen. 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 All yep. right. Awesome. Okay. okay. So we have basically one final appeal. This is going for the bra. We got to include the sisters too. Yes. Because my my wife drives my truck very often. She's gone and made runs at long distances to pick up different things, soil Mm -hmm. and implements Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and uh, you know compost and different things. Brothers and sisters, you have you have to get a truck. Now I've said this on other series that we've done that before you leave the city or soon after you leave the city and get to a country environment, you have to have a truck. I don't know what I would have done without this. Now, we, we bought this right before we left LA. We bought it maybe two weeks mm-hmm. before we left. Mm-hmm. It has been a great blessing. 99% of the work I have to do around here requires this truck. Yes. You yeah. have to have it. I'm gonna quote a dear friend of mine who's deceased. His name is Elder Mason. Some of you may have heard of him. I remember we were on the phone. I was in L.A. And we were talking about me moving out here. We had gotten approved for the house and everything was good to go. Mm -hmm. And he told me in very clear language, he said, Brother Bridges, don't leave L.A. and come out to Tennessee. Don't come out here without a truck. (laughs) And so I I believe that was wise counsel, right? In the multitude Mm -hmm. of counselors, there is safety. There is safety. There is safety. So I heeded, I hearkened, I listened, and I did. Mm-hmm. And again, we've been greatly blessed. So again, it doesn't matter what year, you may want to consider the size. This one's a Ford, it's a 2005, it's a 6.3, a six foot three uh, length bed. It served me very well. It's a crew cab mm-hmm. and uh, I, I, I can't express in words how valuable it's been. I don't know where we'd be without it. Exactly. But it's not just any truck though. It is and it has a four wheel drive. There you go, brother. Which, yes. is, which is, again, invaluable. Yes. Mud, weather conditions, gravel, so many things that I've had to contend with that would not have been possible without a 4x4. Yes. Four-wheel drive. Yep. A regular two-wheel drive truck, leave it in no. the dealership. Leave it there. Yes, sir. You yes, need sir. it in the country. You need a four-wheel yeah. drive in the country. Yeah. yeah. So you pack and pray. You don't delay. You start today as far as leaving the city, but you also start to pray for a truck. Because along with that country property, you need a truck. Yes. You need a truck. Yes. Yeah. It's inv- invaluable. Great. Amen. Great. No way around it. No way around it. Thank you for watching another Ark to Build, the Country Outpost Center on Living Manor Media. So to send a gift of love to Living Manor Ministries, go to our website and simply click the Donate tab. Thank you for your support, and God bless.